Hi, everybody. Uh, I apologize for uh, presenting in English to an Italian meetup, <laughs> but I don't speak Italian. So um, I'm here to talk about Rundeck and uh, what it can do and, uh, and just to kind of give you an idea and a, and a demo of what Rundeck is. So I'm logged into Rundeck here, as you can see. Um, Rundeck is an uh, is automation software that allows you to create um, automation events that are programmable that you can uh, then that you can then run at the click of a button or more importantly with, with integrations to other systems. So I'm going to start with kind of a tour of the Rundeck uh, interface so you can see a bit more about the product and, 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 and what it is. And then we're going to do um, an automation demo. Um, unfortunately, this demo does not use Zabbix. It uses a different monitoring system. But, you can, but everything that I'm doing here is possible to do with Zabbix as well. So um, this is the uh, Rundeck uh, default login page. Uh, this is, a, uh, this is a, an instance that we're using for uh, testing and for some demos. Um, I'm going to start up here on the top right. Uh, this is your user profile. You can uh, manage users, all the normal things uh, that you would normally do. The key thing is that you can also manage um, API tokens there, which is one of the ways that you can connect with Rundeck um, with other services is through, uh, through our REST API. In the management interface, the main thing I want to show here is, or is two things. First is key storage. And what key storage does is it's, uh, it's secrets management that allows you to securely store uh, passwords, secure shell keys, um, API tokens, anything like that, that Rundeck will need to connect to other services. We have a secure way to store that. Um, also, we can uh, connect with um, HashiCorp Vault, uh, Thycotic, and um, there's one other system that we support now that I can't remember the name of right offhand, uh, CyberArk. Uh, so we can tie into CyberArk, Thycotic, or HashiCorp Vault, as well as use our internal uh, key store. And all of these uh, secrets are encrypted and stored in the database. Um, and uh, it's also if you give them access. Uh, so the other thing that I want to show here is we also have, um, this is a demo instance without many policies, but we have full access control rights to everything in Rundeck so that you can give your users very the, the least privilege that they need to do what they need to do. So finally, Rundeck is organized into projects. Um, and so these projects are basically where you will schedule, where you will set up your automation jobs. And we have, we have just a few jobs scheduled in here, uh, set in here right now. Um, and we're gonna look at the safe database restart in just a minute. But um, what we, the rest of this is, consider, is centered around nodes. Again, this being a demo instance, I don't have many nodes configured, but a node is essentially a server or a network device or anything that you can log into through your network via, uh, via some type of uh, command line interface. Um, we support uh, several different login protocols. Um, we have a couple of different providers for Secure Shell. We also can do, um, we also can use Ansible to shell into remote systems, and we can also use WinRM. And this is by default. We have several other options that are available as plugins online uh, that you can use, uh, that you can set up a, um, a bastion host for a jump box for Secure Shell and some other options. So we, can, we have a lot of connection options to be able to log into these systems. Um, the, uh, but let's go take a look at this job real quick. And what we're going to do is I'm going to edit this thing and then we'll, and then I'll talk about the demo. So in this particular job, there's a couple of the options that you have. First is you can schedule it to run at any given time. Uh, you can schedule it at a specific time and a specific day, or you can use a cron tab syntax. 
uh, to schedule it at it, uh, basically any time in any repeating period that you need. We also have a separate calendar feature uh, that allows you to create CronTab calendar slots that you can attach multiple jobs into so that you can have three or four or 15 jobs at any, at any particular time slot. So if you have a regular maintenance window that you need to, um, that you need to do several tasks at a given time, uh, then you can you can have you can schedule that and then maintain all of those uh, job maintain all of those scheduled jobs there. Uh, we also have a blackout um, calendar so that you can turn off scheduled jobs within uh, within a particular time. If you have say if you have a scheduled maintenance window, but you need to instead of doing your regular maintenance. Uh, you need to do a major software deployment so you, you can turn off your maintenance while you're doing that scheduled deployment. It makes it much easier to do. Um, the other things that we can do in here um, is we have automatic notifications with several different events. Um, when the job starts, when, it's, when it finishes successfully, when it fails, um, we can notify um, a big list of services. And these are all plugins, so uh, so this is also extensible. The Rundeck plugin format is essentially a wrapper. It's an XML file that describes what you need to do and how Rundeck talks to the the external plugin, and um, and then uh, that can be that can be written in almost any language that your Rundeck server supports. Uh, Rundeck by default is written in Java, so a lot of our built-in plugins are written in uh, either Java or Groovy. But we also have uh, we also build and maintain plugins that are written in um, uh, Python. Uh, some that are some are written in Bash shell. Uh, you can write plugins in PowerShell if you want to install Runneck on a Windows server. So uh, finally, um, the most important thing is the workflow. So what we're looking at here is the configuration for what this job is going to do. So to give you some context for this particular job. I actually have a uh, MariaDB server uh, that's running on uh, that's running on a um, uh, on an Amazon instance, and what I'm going to do right now while we're talking about the demo is I am going to uh, go ahead and trigger uh, that database service to stop. So I've got a monitor watching this uh, watching this service, and that monitor is tied into PagerDuty. Um, so what's going to happen is when the monitor detects that this service is down, I'm actually going to get a phone call um, on my telephone uh, from PagerDuty telling me that the, uh, the system is down. And then we have PagerDuty integrated with Rundeck, uh, and I'll show you that when this triggers. Uh, PagerDuty is integrated with Rundeck uh, directly uh, through a webhook so that we can then send um, a trigger to Rundeck to automatically execute the job. Uh, that will remediate the database. So the job that remediates the database is right here. We're using now this rule set strategy is a Rundeck Enterprise product. Uh, Rundeck has two release versions. We have Rundeck Community, which is our our um, fully open source um, single server um, Rundeck that can do almost everything that Rundeck Enterprise can do. And here is my alert. So let me acknowledge this alert uh, on my phone. And so I'm gonna reload this page to show you the uh, acknowledged incident. <clears throat> so here's the acknowledged incident. Uh, we're gonna click on this and I'll show you the integration in just a minute Thank now that the incident is created. But um, so basically Rundeck community is capable of almost everything that Rundeck Enterprise can do. Um, in enterprise, we have a couple. We have a handful of predefined um, plugins for uh, commercial services like uh, PagerDuty and ServiceNow that make it easier to integrate with these services. It's still possible to do. Um, we have uh, one of the job steps in Rundeck. When you're configuring a job, you have a jar, a big list of actions that you can that you can do. And again, all of these are plugins. Uh, we have two separate classes, node steps, which operate on a remote node that, that we showed you earlier, and then workflow steps, which are only going to work once. 
um, in this particular workflow. Um, and you can target, you can have a job target multiple nodes um, at a given time. So if you need to run the same automation on 15 different servers in your network, um, then you just select 15 different servers when you run the job and it will work on all of them. Um, but basically uh, some, of these, uh, some, some of these commercial services like Datadog and PagerDuty are um, run at Enterprise, but we also have, let me find it, this HTTP request step, which basically gives you a full REST API client that you can, that you can build uh, uh, API calls around directly within Rundeck. Um, and in fact, you can even create these as individual jobs, and you can then call those, those jobs from another Rundeck job to compose uh, your automation. So the, uh, so the, basically these are convenience plugins. The other difference between Rundeck Enterprise and Rundeck, um, and, and Rundeck Community is that Rundeck Enterprise is capable of a high availability clustering, which is, that's the major difference between Enterprise and Community is that HA clustering. Um, we have a couple of other features that for Windows support, but um, almost everything else is, is available in Community as well. So, um, so basically, uh, what this job is going to do when we run it is it's going to it's going to run our, on our database server. It's going to basically just check the database service. It's running a single command. Um, it's going to check the status of, Mar of of MariaDB, and then it's going to spit out as a specific data format. And the reason we have this specific data format is so that I can use this this thing we call a log filter which looks at the responses of a particular step in a job and will apply a regex, a regular expression to that job. And we're gonna look for this, we're gonna look for um, basically the feedback from this, uh, from this command. We're looking for active, uh, the word active. And if so, uh, we're gonna store the results in this uh, internal variable um, status that we can then use later on in uh, later on in our uh, in our automation, so then we're going to um, ex we're going to promote that particular variable into um, into a, a more accessible open variable class, so that other parts later in the job can use it easier. Um, and then we're just going to uh, this is just some debug uh, giving us information about about our variables. Um, and then the rest of this is going to go through update some pa update our PagerDuty incident for us, so that now that we have an acknowledged incident in PagerDuty, um, the webhook's going to going to tell us some information. It's going to let us know the PagerDuty job uh, incident ID and some other data about the job uh, about the incident, so that we can then go back and make API calls back to PagerDuty and update that incident. Then we're gonna then we're gonna restart the database, and then we're gonna do some sanity checks. We're gonna wait for the port to open, and then we're going to um, and then we're gonna run and actually run a SQL query against that database to make sure that it's up before we resolve the incident. Um, and this we're using some flow control um, in here and using our rule set strategy so that we're actually not um, we're we're not going to uh, restart the database. Um, if, uh, if, if the database is actually running. Um, and then um, we're also not going to run our uh, PagerDuty updates if somebody's running the job locally um, without a PagerDuty incident because otherwise this automation will break because we don't have that incident ID. So what's going to happen now is um, I'm going to change into our activity log so everything that every job that's run in Rundeck um, is show, shows up in this activity log, and you can go back in the history of of your incidents, or oh, oh, history of your Rundeck actions, and go take a look at the result of anything that has been done before. So we're get, I'm leaving this here for now, and I'm going to check auto refresh uh, for uh, for the moment, so that this thing auto auto refreshes. Although I may have to do it manually. And then we're going to run this uh, MariaDB restart action. So this is a, a this is called a custom incident action in PagerDuty. All we're doing is calling a webhook. Zabbix can do that as well. 
So on an alert, you could actually, um, uh, in Zabbix, you can trigger an action in run deck directly through, uh, directly through the, um, uh, your, your alerts. And then you can have run deck go do any automated event that you need to. So if you notice that the uh, incident is already resolved, so what we're going to do is I'm actually going to go, I'm going to force refresh this. We did have a new result show up, but this is our automation. And now we can take a look at the results of the job. And I'm going to switch to, uh, actually, we'll go ahead and do full log output mode. This is in debug mode right now. So we're going to get a massive amount of data um, here. But um, basically, this is, this is the, um, the payload from our uh, uh, PagerDuty incident. Um, and then we're going to go through and do our, uh, do our research. It's a little bit too much to go through to easily see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the view to the workflow view. And now basically you can see that every individual step in this job uh, finished uh, and, and green, means, green means it was successful. Um, if any step in this job fails, um, then the job will actually stop running at that step and you can then trigger an error condition. You can add an error handler to, to gracefully fail your job. Um, you can also send notifications on a failure to say, hey, there's a, there's a problem. In this case, in our incident, you notice that we actually have some notices here. These are actually the updates from PagerDuty or from Rundeck into PagerDuty, giving the status of uh, giving the status of our job. So what we would know at this point is that if it ever if it failed, we would know that Rundeck started uh, started the remediation, um, and then if we didn't get the restarted uh, message, then we know that the database didn't successfully restart. Um, and if we didn't get the sanity check passing notice, we, we know that the database restarted, but there was a problem there. So um, you can also send logs. You can send um, any information that you need to into this page duty incident, but you can also do the same thing in any other ticket management system, um, or you can call an API on some other service. Um, so if, you, if you've got a stuck job queue and you need to, um, basically force that job queue to reset and then send uh, send some messages back into the job queue for testing. Anything that you need to do like that through APIs or through programming, you can do. Uh, the other thing that I want to show you is that primarily with Rundeck, the, the job automations are fairly simple. You're running single commands, um, or um, but the other thing that we can do is we can also run scripts. So within the job edit interface, if I go and add a script step here, what we can do is now you can, you can actually paste in your script. If it's Python, um, you can start, um, um, you know, whatever you need to do. But um, so we have this uh, export variable that we were referring to uh, earlier, export at status. You can use those variables as a template replacement in your script directly here. And so anything that you can that you can script, any automations that you already have, you can add in to your uh, you can add into your uh, automation here. Um, the other really really nice thing that I that I like about uh, what we can do with Rundeck is that you can also tie your automations per project. So a project in Rundeck is just a folder to manage. Um, a set of automated jobs and the servers that the servers that you need to use within that um, within that context. So these jobs can access these these servers, um, and you can then set up your access control restrictions so that one user group only has access to that particular project. That way, if you have an application team that needs to maintain and run their own project, you can give them dedicated access to a project for their application and not access to anything else in your infrastructure. But we also have a uh, source control uh, management for your project so that your automations uh, can actually be exported to a Git repository and that can be stored in any Git management system like uh, GitHub or GitLab or, or um, uh, Bamboo, any, any system like that 
so that you can also have a uh, so that you can also have kind of a source control uh, code first um, man, uh, managed system for your automation. Uh, you can even do Git flow branching because when you're setting up like if you're setting up export to uh, to a Git project, you can uh, you can actually uh, push to a particular branch. Um, so if we don't want to push to uh, master or main, we can push to dev. Um, and then um, you can then maintain pull requests and promote automation from, uh, from your dev branch to your production branch. And then you can set up your import in a separate project or even in a separate server to pull from, uh, to pull from your Git repository so that you can maintain full workflow of that. So um, that's kind of the general overview of Rundeck. Uh, the idea is that you know you can run these automation jobs from uh, several different methods. You, the four methods are user login and actually clicking the button, scheduling, um, uh, API calls, or uh, webhooks. So um, and those and so any of those any of those methods can trigger the jobs that you run. Uh, these jobs can run remotely on any system in your network that you have configured. And um, and then from there, you can basically disguise the limit. Uh, your creativity is the limit to what you can do within the Rundeck product. Um, I've been with Rundeck for a year and a half now, but um, I also worked for the founders of the Rundeck uh, project uh, 10 years ago, and I, I had to come home to it because I love this product so much. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. And uh, thank you for your time. And if you have any questions, um, my email address is just keith at rundeck.com. Um, and I don't have a good way to show that to you on screen here, um, but um, K-E-I-T-H at rundeck.com or, or pagerduty.com, they both work. Um, I'm here whenever you need me. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Kate, um, and thank you for your time to explain Randek. I, I, I will mention another time that Randek is, is an open source solution, so you can download uh, now, today, and start to try uh, what Kate explained, you know, the, the easiest and uh, the, the, the nice feature that uh, you can use uh, every day. For automation. So uh, in italiano, cioè, se, se avete domande per Kate, eh, se c'è qualche domanda dalla regia, eh, vi ricordo appunto che eh, Randec è una soluzione completamente open source e la potete scaricare direttamente dal sito ufficiale. Uh, ah, ecco. Ok, uh, there, there, there is a question. Uh, Randec is a kind of Ansible or soul stack? Um, it's, it's similar. Um, except that the difference is that um, Rundeck doesn't have a uh, Rundeck doesn't have as much of a defined language for uh, managing configuration management. It's specifically for um, triggered events. So you can with Ansible and SaltStack, you can set up remote access to uh, to your servers, and you can run arbitrary commands on those remote servers, um, just like you can with Rundeck. The difference is that with, um, with Rundeck, what we don't do is we don't specify the, um, what software and what configurations need to be on that target node. That's not what Rundeck is for. Um, what we do is um, like scripts and, um, and automations uh, for maintenance and for ongoing management of those systems. Um, and we actually work with, uh, we, we play well with both Ansible and Salt. We actually have integrations with Ansible. Um, so a couple of things that you can do is you can actually use your, your defined Ansible connections as what we call our node executor. That's the plugin that remotes out into your Ansible systems. We can actually go through Ansible to manage those remote systems. Um, the other thing that we can do with Ansible specifically is um, we can pull in a uh, node definition. So our database of the servers that we need to go out and log into, we can pull those definitions in from Ansible as well, um, whether we're using Ansible directly to talk to those systems or not. Uh, we do not have those same integrations with Salt, um, but, the, um, but the general idea of what Ansible and Salt do are they're 
really similar products as what they do in their feature set. We basically fit in between um, the provisioning part of managing your systems that Ansible and Salt are really good at and the, um, and the runtime management of what happens if something breaks, how do we resolve it, how do we diagnose it, how do we fix it, we're good at running the um, at running the the scripts and the automations that um, that do that stuff in the middle, and that's uh, that's kind of the difference. Um, we we also have a few other integrations with Ansible to be able to uh, call um, play Ansible playbooks on a remote system, um, things like that. Uh, we're we're big fans of Ansible here at Rundeck, um, and Salt is uh, we we I like Salt a lot too but uh, this product doesn't have as many integrations with it, but it plays just as well. 